Heather, it seems like you and Whitney ended the season in a better place. It was so fun to look out and see you and Justin singing. <laughs> How do you feel about your relationship with Whitney? You know, I'm a sucker, man. Sorry, Meredith. I still feel hopeful and wary. And I why don't know. Do you take sorry, Meredith. If you want, if that's what I you know, want, I'm happy I for you. I want to be strong for you, Ron. You don't I need want to, to be, be strong. strong for me. Be who you need to be for you. <laughs> You're strong, Ron, and I'm not. No, I just, you know, I don't want to be a sucker. I've seen, you know, and I hear it a lot, like that I've just, you know, I just am a, sad sack sucker for Jen, but I am, you know? I really felt so safe and so loved and so um, into my f connection with Whitney and I don't feel that anymore, but I I feel like she took it away. If Heather can't validate my feelings and hear me, then I probably have to take a friendship break. So I'm hoping that it comes back and I don't know how I'm gonna manage that, right? Does that sound, do I sound crazy? No, it sounds sound like you crazy. don't know like, what's gonna happen and you're open to whatever I love transpires toxic people. in you. Bring me a narcissist, abuse me, use me, I love it. <laughs> it. It's really unfortunate because there are moments where I feel like Heather and I have had like a really good connection and a lot of fun, but unfortunately, I think that she chooses fame over family. Hmm. We go on to Ultimate Girls Trip together and it was really an aha moment to watch the other women from other cities having the same experience that I've had with Heather. And we made up in Thailand, but I'm realizing now she did it to gain favor with the women that were on the trip because everyone wanted us to make up. Then she ghosted me. And then at BravoCon, she completely came sniping for me. It was and do you, a, you remember what you said about Angie she Harrington? You took my to lunch to let her make friend. sure she wasn't friends with Lisa and then what you said about her like the second that you had an opportunity? That's not what we're talking about, love. During the Salt Lake City panel, we popped off a little bit uh, and then on the Ultimate Girls Trip panel, um, a fan came for me on behalf of Heather. Like you kept trying to stop it from happening and someone kept it going, you know what I mean? And I do want the relationship to, you know, heal, but the thing is, everything you said yesterday was correct, you know? And I went up to Heather on stage after our mics were taken away, and I said, what the f are you doing? I said, we made up, Heather, what the f are you doing? You are a liar, and I see exactly what you're doing. She was like, it's not the time or place. And then we had the Ultimate Girls Trip photo shoot, and I just sat there, like, she's on the couch next to me. Like, I, I'm unfazed now because I know, I know her true colors. And so I know where to put her. And that doesn't mean I'm never gonna talk to her again. I'm gonna see her around, like, we're family. Uh, but I'm never going to let Heather in at the level that I have because I don't trust her. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna be nice and I can still be in the same room with her. But she's not what, she's not what everyone thinks she is. Jack Barlow gave you a bit of a shock about his future. Fudge college, honestly, there's no need for it. No, it just hurt my feelings. Years. Like, I'm trying to, like, understand where you're coming from. And it seems like you're giving attitude. Jack has decided that he's going to go to college. Jack is going to college. And so I'm just curious, like, what are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? And what's up with Jack Barlow and baby gorgeous uh, Henry? Oh, my gosh. So... You know, so it's so crazy how fast your kids grow up. Jack's a senior in high school. We ordered his cap and gown today. I'm like dying. I literally have all these emotions. Like he's my baby. I don't care that he's 18. And he literally, every goal he sets for, him, for himself, he attains. You know, when you first met Jack, he was like on his list, get shredded. Um, he is shredded. Jack is... So fit, he has his father's physique. That kid got so lucky. Um, he looks amazing. He is very social. His business is doing great. Um, he's really mentoring Henry and they do little videos together and um, he's doing some marketing things with him. But like, I, I'm excited for him. I'm sad for me. I, you know, there's a part of me that's like, stay home and live with me forever, but I know that's not gonna happen. Um, but he is gonna go to college. He's applied to seven right now, um, Baby Gorgeous is in fifth grade, so I have a senior in elementary school. He is fast talking. Jack. Jack's just daydreaming about women. Oh. <laughs> Best negotiator ever. Where do you wanna go eat, baby love? 
Uh, could we go to Wendy's? You wanna go to Wendy's? Like so funny, so witty, happy. He just told us on Saturday that he can't wait to be 15 so he can invite girls over so he can like make out and watch movies downstairs. Get my first kiss at 15. Whoa. That's a, called a long-term goal. Yeah. Okay, wow. But he's doing so good. I call him Angel Baby now because everybody uses Baby Gorgeous and he wants to be Angel Baby. But they're doing great, like everything's so good and it's crazy how fast time goes. I love that that's what your fans have adopted as their, their nicknames, your Baby Gorgeous. Baby Gorgeous. Henry secretly loves it. He gets jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he's the OG Baby Gorgeous. Oh, he is OG, the OG. And at school, his teacher even calls him that, Baby Gorgeous. I'm like, I love it. He loves it. In response to you saying that Jen didn't pay you back for Coach Shaw's party, Jen says she gave you a necklace. I was supposed to open up my house, not open up my wallet, and you haven't said a f***ing word. You didn't come to clean up. I you gave you a f***ing $5,000 necklace. Don't, don't lie, Angie. So Jen was wearing an evil eye necklace for a few months. I complimented her on it. Okay, this is beautiful. She said, oh, I'm having one made for you. And I thought, wow, that's really sweet. Well, three months now goes by. We're party planning for San Diego. And then out of the blue, she takes the necklace off, turns around and hangs it on my neck and said, oh, that's for Sharif's party. I brought this over because I couldn't put it on with my nails. I love it. There you go. Is this a hostess gift because you never sent me a thank you card? And this is a necklace that you've been wearing. It's scratched. You've had it for months. I felt really manipulated in that moment. And then I started to see. I think Angie and Jen had the understanding that Angie was going to help her put it together, front the money, and Jen was gonna pay her back. Have you, you even offered to reimburse yes, one? Yes, I have. Month? Really? Are you kidding me right Girl, now? Girl, it was three months ago. Oh my gosh. It was never like, oh, here's a necklace and call it good. I mean, that's a thank you gift. It's not a payment for the party or payment for services rendered. The agreement was she would pay for the party, not, hey, three and a half months in, when I haven't reimbursed you or said a word, I'm gonna hang this necklace on you and you're gonna stay quiet that I haven't paid you back. She didn't even show up with a plan for me. For the hours that I took away from doing all the work because you went MIA and took away from my daughter and my family to plan this party. Angie's not a party planner. I mean, she's great at planning parties. The party was lovely. It was uncomfortable though. Like if I were Jen, I would be mortified. But I also think it's like, how far can you keep pushing someone? Like you expect everyone to protect you, but they're, you're putting everybody on the plank and ready to push them in the ocean. So at this point, it's like, what did you expect Angie to do? Like, what did you think the breaking point was gonna be before enough was enough? Whitney, we unfortunately saw Justin change his career path this season. I will truly miss so much about these past seven years. They have been some of the best years of my life with three hearts. In the Rose household, like what, where are things going from here? Well, currently I am the breadwinner. And I am so proud and honored to say that because it is always been a goal of mine. Since the day Justin and I got married, I said, someday I'm gonna retire you and you're gonna get to golf and then manage the kids. It's been a dream of mine. It's been important to me. So Wild Rose Beauty is doing great. Um, Justin still has four and a half months left of his non-compete. Mm -hmm. um, and in the non-compete, he cannot work for Wild Rose Beauty because I'm that big of a threat. <laughs> um, so he, Justin is living his best life. He is taking naps, he's <laughs> driving carpool. It's actually been a very beautiful thing for us because um, after such a hard year, my husband gets to be home with our children. Like as a mother, it is so meaningful for me that they have a dad that's present in their life. That's so cool. So I don't know what's next for Justin Rose's career, but my goal is to keep bringing in the money and keeping him home because I get to boss that man around and it's so <laughs> amazing. Uh, do you color a cold setting? Wow. Mr. Mom, huh? And Absolutely. so I have to ask, does, uh, does Justin pick up FaceTime at carpool? Mary, I was driving carpool okay. with my children. Don't, it is don't irresponsible bring, bring your voice down. Bring your voice car. down. You can go. You're not you hearing me, Mayor. Little girl. <laughs> only if Mary's calling. Only if, only if I'm calling. No, Justin does not pick up the phone ever. It's actually a problem. So. <laughs> <laughs>
the husbands behind the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City continue to grow closer this season. I, I knocked and the door I'm opened. Glad you just came in. Okay. You know, I was the no wife zone. It's a good balance yeah. because us women have so much drama yeah. and so much beef. I never heard that. Mm -hmm. That the men, they really do bring it back down to like a basic core level. We can't rush them. You let the girls align when they're ready to align. Right, so let's let's them align. Let them align. Even when women are feuding, the men still have that like, hey, we're gonna let the women, they're crazy, we're gonna let them do that, mm -hmm. and they still have their bond. They're kind of going through it all together. Mm -hmm. so we're, we're all with you <laughs> and your family. Thank you. Thank you, brother. John and I work a lot and, um, you know, we're doing a lot of kid stuff. So it's nice to see him bond with the other husbands. I think Sharif is so cool and kind. He's always been beyond nice to me. I think he appreciates my husband because they're both very reasonable people and principled people. Seth has always been, you know, I've known Seth for years. He's always been super funny and fun to be around. He's like a kid. He's like fun. And, you know, I enjoy their dynamics and relationships. And Justin and John, they get beers all the time. They've even taken the boys like bowling and, yeah. cause Je um, Henry and Brooks are close in age. Mm -hmm. So they, they actually spend a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. You know, the last thing you wanna do is like have our conflict. I don't like you commenting on my mental stability and health. I didn't say your mental you stability. You basically did. No, I did not. Spill into their relationship. Your wife brought up rumors that Lisa cheated on me just out of the blue. And so, I don't know. But I think they are really all cute and fun together.